sometimes a little box jumps some up on your screen somewhere so you may need to click that get it out of the way and then i mute and again if questions pop up as we go feel free to unmute and ask all right so we start sitting in the chair sitting at the front edge of the chair so this is just a great uh, practice to do regularly, uh, no matter who you are or what you're dealing with, but especially uh, uh, in terms of uh, calming the nervous system, right? And also training the fundamentals of, of posture that, again, there's what's called Zhong Zhong, Zhong Zhong, Chinese term meaning central upright. So again, we don't want to be here. Uh, uh, that's, that's the common one, is this sort of slouching that happens. So usually we need to apply a little effort to tip the pelvis correct, get this vertical line. Uh, and so everyone agrees that having a good upright posture is, is uh, valuable. Uh, but where the Taoist Tai Chi Qigong Chinese medicine view uh, sort of diverges in a very important way is then they talk about, again, once you achieve your vertical upright, you don't want to hold yourself there. So this tension-based relationship we have with our body of holding it is something that Tai Chi understands as being very not helpful and not useful. So the next concept uh, uh, after Zhong Zhong is what's called Chun Wan, or releasing and letting sinking happen, a sort of settling, sinking heaviness down through the body. So releasing and sinking as your means of creating and finding more stability. So instead of tension giving us stability, relaxation, which allows this sinking to happen, gives us the stability we want. And then the third idea is that if you do that correctly, what's left is what's called Qing Ling, which means light and nimble and agile and fluid, right? So the Tai Chi ideal is that we're not holding our body and then trying to move it, we've let go of all the different relationships in the body, and then we move it with, you could think of it as hydraulic power, as opposed to levers and tension. And so most people are operating in levers and tension, and Tai Chi says, no, that's our backup system. Our primary system is fluid liquidity, easing, moving, right? So all these, I'm doing some of the different movements from Tai Chi, right? But you can see this idea of, it has a quality about it that isn't the same as a robotic movement or yanking on my body, right? So how do we achieve that better and better? First, we gotta find those qualities, Zhong Zhong, Chun one or releasing and sinking, and then just feel that looseness, just feel kind of relaxed and easy. And then to help with this breathing, so you take a nice inhale and feel that expansion. You're opening yourself up, you're stretching yourself open, and then with the exhale, let it soften and relax and melt. And then again, when you're ready, you inhale. an expansion, and then the exhale. We're going to do that, let's say, eight more times. So there's this idea of a range of motion that needs to be able to be achieved with the various body parts, that's including breathing. So when you inhale, there has to be this 
pliability, this suppleness to allow opening in all these directions. And then there has to be that suppleness to uh, and relax and melt and empty. And then when you're ready again, you inhale. And hold full. And then exhale. Hold empty. Let's do three more. Think of the whole practice as we're actually dissolving. We're getting rid of. We're cleaning out what is currently in you that's not necessary. That's actually gumming up the works. That's in the way of the natural state. So we're not adding stuff on. We're actually doing exercises and movements that clean out or liberate something that's stuck together that would be better uh, uh, operating if it were released. Right? So now these next movements we do help that. Slide your hands back, elbows back, shoulder blades back as you lift your chest up, lift your chin up, and arch the spine. So go all the way from neutral to back bend. Right? And then the opposite of that shape, slide your hands forward past your knees so your arms are straight. Hollow the chest back, so now your back is rounding. You can see my back rounding, and then drop your head. And we'll do that a few times. Slide the hands back, elbows back, shoulder blades back, chest up, chin up, look way, way up. And then slide the hands forward, past the knees, hollow the chest, drop the head, round the back. Let's do that three more times. So we're looking for freedom of movement, between the ends of the range of motion that our body is designed to explore. And the process of aging, even if you don't have something like Parkinson's or some other issue, the process of aging just does this to us. It, it narrows and closes things down. So the Taoist uh, insight is like, well, no. Do practices that do not allow that encroaching, narrowing, closing process. And then you keep at bay this, you know, less than ideal state as long as possible. <clears throat> so a certain quality of health is freedom of movement through all the different design ranges. And that's different than flexibility. It's kind of, it's got flexibility, but it also has to be functional. So if we just stretch something constantly, we can make it actually less functional because we've over stretched it, right? And so all these movements are meant to produce functional, pliable uh, flexibility and strength. So that term in Taoist practice is song, song. It means Soft, supple, pliable, resilient, but highly functional and powerful, right? So the next movement, left hand forward, right hand and elbow back, turn the shoulders, turn the head, rotate, and then switch and turn the other way. So don't be in a rush. You're just going at your pace. <clears throat> and then turn. So we're picking a mechanism or a set of body parts that functionally, uh, that, that operate in a functional way, mechanism, right? <clears throat> and we're tuning it up. We're cleaning off the residue. We're lighting up the portion of the brain and nervous system that control the mechanism. term for that in Taoist practice, Shen Fa, body 
method, the body mechanism method. So each of these things that we do is a Shen Fa that leads us towards Sung, soft, supple, pliable, resilient, and functional. Back to neutral, hang the arms. So now we're in neutral, sitting straight up and down. Now we go sideways, just leaning sideways. Let the head drop that way. Let the whole spinal column have a bowing to the right and then back to middle and then bowing to the left and then back to middle. Now, the way the body's built, if I just leave my arms hanging like this, I have a some, somewhat of a limitation. So we add to it as you bow to your right, lift your left wrist right in front of your chest here. So that allows you a little more room to dangle, lean, and play with that shen fa. And then we switch, we're back to neutral. Now left arm is long, right wrist floats up as we lean <coughs> back to middle. Lean. Middle. When you lift the wrist, keep it loose, dangling. So it's not stiff, it's relaxed. So the whole body is relaxed, especially as you practice more and more. Now we're back to neutral. Now a very important part of the body, the shoulder blades on your back, where the arms plug in to the scapula. So the basic movements of the scapula, up, and down, again, up, way, way up, and then all the way down. The other movement, together, neutral, and then they go apart from each other. Now the apart movement is the weirdest one. That's the one everyone kind of knows this because they say, okay, get your shoulders back, stand up straight. But this movement is one that people don't understand how to do right so like joe you're going like this right drop your arms let your arms hang it's the scapula it's this on your back that slides apart from each other and around the side of the rib cage apart from each other and then neutral and then they squeeze together so notice usually you can get the squeeze together because again, the brain knows and understands that, but it's this spreading apart that people don't have. So again, that's where a lot of the, the residue is built up in the mechanism. Now, we go apart, up, back, down, neutral, apart and up. <clears throat> Back, down, neutral. So now we're moving through the whole range of that mechanism. Right? And this is the first direction. Right, front to back circles. Now we go back to front. So back and up, forward, down. Back, up, forward, down. You can see that my arms are moving through space because they're attached to the shoulder blade. So the arms can't be held stiff and trying to move. That won't work. The arms have to be released, kind of like a tail on an animal, right? The, the scapula is the animal, and the tail, or the arms is the tail. It has to go along with it. So that's what you end up getting over time is this freeing up of your arm 
So it has all this function, but it has to be loosened from the, the root of the arm there. <clears throat> One more. And down. All right. Now, bend the elbows to free the uh, congestion here even more. We go elbows out and up. So notice where my elbows are. They're way up high. So try to get as much of that as you can and then let them come down. And then bring the elbows around in front. Touch and down. So again, we're freeing up the mechanism in the body. Elbows out and up. So keep your elbows bent there. Out. Okay, we understand that. But then this. Right? And feel that that's from, from here, from the scapula, from the back, from the side of the body. We have to let go of that, that limit there. And then <clears throat> they come down and then around the front. Touch. One more. And down. And in front. Now we go elbows back. So a different use of the mechanism. Elbows straight back, elbows down, elbows forward, right? Elbows up. And then forward, down, back, down, forward, up. Forward, down, back. Down, forward, up. <clears throat> right, so freedom of movement through the range of motion that the body was designed to be able to explore. Elbows flare out. Now left hand high, right hand low. Cross. The body's built to be able to make this shape, this closing, hollowing in front, and this wrapping around. And then <clears throat> open, straight out to the side. And then switch. Closing. Open. one of the problems with the human body is that it is such an amazing machine, such an amazing vehicle with so many possible moving parts and spiral spaces and ways that this body can be used. And because of that, as we live a long life and we don't use all those Mechanisms, they just acquire plaque and residue and rust and that kind of thing. And so these practices are about going to all those places and, and getting them cleaned out and liberated, right? Now, scoot back on your chair. Right knee up. Right foot drawn in. So now you're loading and then push away and then reload down. Other leg. Load. Push, load, down, load, push, load, down, continue. So mechanism, the mechanism of the leg being freed all the way straightened and then freed all the way bent and then setting it down. It's also the brain getting the nervous system and the brain to be able to orchestrate the movement, to coordinate all the parts together. Now, right leg straighten. We go point and flex and point and flex. If the foot is complex. It can also tilt a little in, out, in, out. Call that inversion and eversion. And then it can also circle. You just got to do all the things the body can do. And then reverse. And other leg. Point and flex. 
<clears throat> Tilt the foot a little in, out, inversion, eversion. Circle. Reverse circle. Scoop forward to the front edge of your chair. Step your feet a little wider apart. Now we lift the toes, turning on the heels, turn the toes and knees in. You're closing the groin area, known as the quad. You're internally rotating your thighs. Now lift your toes and externally rotate. Feel that space that opens up there. That's your quad. Close. Oh. Right, we have neutral, and we go through neutral to a closed position, and then open position, closed position, open, right? Freedom of movement of the mechanism through its range, and then pause in the middle. Bring your feet back to hip distance. Now we go from that same qua space, fold, right? Fold. So what's important here is that I'm not rounding my back, but that I am folding from the hips. So this crease deep in here, where the legs plug into the pelvis, that space is where this function is cultivated. So it's about not allowing this space to become glued together, stuck, bound but rather having it be sung, soft, supple, pliable, movable, spacious, spacious, right? And now here we are uh, sitting vertical, hang your arms. So now we've loosened the shoulder blades, we've loosened all the parts in a, just a general way. Of course, we can spend more time doing that, but we just kind of hit all the basics. Slide your feet back a little, so now, stay very relaxed. We fold in half the arms and shoulders out past the ankles, and we just come out of the chair. So if done correctly, you shouldn't need to tighten everything up and force anything at all. It should just be relaxed. And then when we sit down, same idea at the qua, that little hip space, there's a little fold. And then we're folding finding the chair with our buttocks, and then sitting back into the chair. So the key to standing up is that the weight currently is going down through the chair to the floor. When I fold and go forward, I let the weight go down through my legs to the floor. But I do have to have a connection to the floor. And the Tai Chi understanding is the best way to have connection to the ground is when you relax everything. So now, anywhere that I tense up, I'm actually uprooting myself. I'm unplugging myself from the state of groundedness. <clears throat> but at first, when you start to relax while being upright, it feels a little less stable. Because if you're accustomed to using tension and then you relax, there's often a little bit of sort of movement and adjustment. But the practice of Tai Chi, again, notice like, like our, grabbing your hand even is doing something, right? Drop your arms, let them go. The other thing people do is they wrap around their arms behind them or they pull the arms into the side or they lock the knees or they sort of jam the back to find stability. We're looking for stability, <clears throat> but we're not looking for it in the right way, right? We're, look, we're getting it, but it's not the best kind, basically, right? And so this soft quality through your body, let those arms just hang. Let those arms just hang, right? Just let them hang. Get accustomed to relying on this quality for your stability. Now, don't sit in your chair. You know it's there, so it's there for safety. But be soft and relaxed. Hip hinge right at the quad. And you just sink as if you're going to sit in the chair but you use this to get your hands down near the toes and then just push through the earth and stand back tall. So this is another 
important movement where like an accordion, like uh, the instrument, the accordion, right? For the accordion to, when an accordion is in a good state, it can close and open unobstructed, unimpeded. If it is stuck anywhere along that range, it does not function as an accordion. So think of your body like that. So this shape that you make, you're going to run into stiff spots. You're going to run into the places that are kind of residue, barnacle, glue, and then you come all the way back up. But as you practice more Tai Chi, Qi Gong, Shen Fa, you liberate all that residue out, and then you have this other vehicle. So we're sort of getting our vehicle back to its ideal state. Now just keep your chair where it is. I'm moving mine because I have limited space. Now, here we are standing. So our basics of Tai Chi, soft knees. So just to feel this, let's do the wrong thing. Lock your knees back. So straighten your legs completely and lock them and feel how that gives you some quality of stability, but actually it kind of has you a little uprooted. And then soften the knees and allow them to have just this little bit of bend, just a little bit. Again. It's different than if I say, bend your knees, that actually hurts the knee joint if you force bend it. So instead, open the knees so they have a bendability, just a little space in the knees. And then feel how that actually connects you to the ground better. Let's do that one more time. Lock the knees. Notice how that cuts you off from uh, connecting to the ground. And then soften those knees and get that little relax. So come to, to be aware of this idea of soft legs, not bent, just soft and relaxed. <clears throat> now, arms, rising hands. We float arms forward and up. So this is the opening Tai Chi move. Float the arms up. And so just look at the qualities of my arms. They're not locked. They're not straight. They're not congested. They're not stiff. They're spacious. There's space all through all the parts, right? And then when I go down, I don't just go down in the same shape. There's a change, right? And now fingertips as if I'm painting with the fingertips down. And then again, when I go up, I don't go up in the same shape. I let it finish, and then it goes up again in that first shape with the round relaxed, loose, spacious quality. And then, damn, that looks great, everybody. Really nice. So you're practicing going, oh, I don't actually need Lee. Lee is tension-based strength, what the Taoists call clumsy tension-based strength. We don't want to use that except in extreme circumstances. We actually want to Use some soft, supple, pliable levitation. Now, scoop the hands in front, and we do that same quality, ah, which changes something through the, the body, right? So out, out to the sides. Take your arms out, right? Wrists relaxed, loose, shoulders loose. And then that little change happens, right? This little change and then sweep down the crane wings, scoop. Again, open. Big opening of the space, and then crane wing, down. Crane wing, open. Down. So if you're doing this right, this should be changing something in the body somewhere that's got a little glue on it is getting unglued somewhere that's got some clumsy tension based strength is getting polished out now here float up pause in the wings turn your palms up so this little roll right so you're going from here to here now that opens the way for this over top down Release, loose, wing, roll, hold, down, 
wing roll fold. Now the complementary movement to that. Backs of hands come to each other, come up close to the body, right? I'm right in close to the body, and then opening out. Now the palms face a little forward, and then they face a little out, and then they face a little down, and then there's this flow. Internally rotate, backs of hands touch, come straight up. Opening, palms face a little forward, then a little out. So there's like a spiraling of the hand, right? And again, it looks kind of easy, but it requires some attention to this naturalness that we want to reclaim in our movement. Now, wings, right hand turn palm up, roll, uh, uh, roll and fold, as left hand sweeps down under, you got low and high, and then like two magnets attracting, two magnets repelling. Go around a big circle, then right hand coming under, left hand roll, fold over top, two magnets attract, repel around. So see if you can time that so it has a, they meet, they meet, they meet. And also the hand that's coming from the bottom is palm face up. So Mark, turn your palm, your right hand, yeah. So it should be like this, right, like a ball, and then separate and they come around. Now this hand is scooping under palm face up as this hand folds over top and then palms, palms around. So this is called Embrace the Moon and this shows up in more complicated places. It's a transition that's all, uh, all throughout Tai Chi. So you want to get that calibrated in your brain, this sort of around, around kind of thing, okay? Now, hands come up, elbows back, turn the palms over, and we push. And then turn the hands around to face the body and draw. And push. And draw. So again, think of this, once you've gotten through the, the physical limits Right? Then it becomes about clearing the brain body limits, right? So then it becomes about being as relaxed as possible. So for those of you that have done this many times, there's layers to, to how to make this useful to you. So then you're working on that Schwen quality. Whereas at first people have like blockages in the tissue that need to be cleaned out. Now then you're working more on the neural blockages. You're polishing the nervous system's uh, relationship, the brain and body. Now, turn just the left hand forward. That pushes. When just the left hand pushes, notice how that turns your body a little bit. Right? So turn. And then turn left hand to face your body. Right hand faces ready to push. And it's draw and push. And the hands change. Draw and push. It's called repel the monkey. Draw and push. Right? So this is an asymmetrical challenge. Turn, draw, and push. So the hands first have to change their relationship and then flow. And then the hands change their relationship and then flow. Change, flow. And then again, as you get better at it, you work on having this sort of unbroken, what they call Schwinn, river like, and down. Now, change your body weight to the right leg, left leg 
can be a little bit empty, and then change your body weight over to the left leg. Remember what I was saying about the, the knees. The knees have to have this soft bend ability. Doesn't mean you force bend your knees, it just means when the body weight gets placed over your left leg, the leg doesn't lock. The opposite must happen. You soften, it receives the weight, and that makes this free. Right, so the saying in Tai Chi, the primary direction is down. How do we get down? By relaxing. So it's down, and that frees this leg. And then it's down, and that frees this leg. So while you're changing leg to leg, we add, change the weight to the left leg, turn, turn from your groin, belly, back area, this mechanism. Turn a little bit, right? And then keep turn to the left as you change the weight to the right leg, and then turn. Now stay turn to your right as you change the weight down through your left leg, then you turn, right? And then it's down through the right, and then turn. and then down to the left and turn. And so as you let your live floating articulate wings, your arms, your octopus tentacles, you let them explore space, then what starts to happen when you shift and turn is different shin fa. This is called the bear washes its paws in the stream. Shift, turn, brush knee, sweep the leg. Shift, turn. All right, this is the simplest possible complex Tai Chi. Right, we're not doing anything crazy, but we are trying to be specific. So look at the hands now. Add the awareness of, okay, so this hand, that palm's facing this way, it's going to brush knee. This hand's facing this way, that's going to sweep the leg, so they're going, they're going, they're going, they're going, they're going, then they turn. Now they're ready to do it in the opposite way. Brush knee, sweep the leg. Couple more, and again, as this body goes from stiff to looser, to looser, then the same movement starts to have those qualities that look kind of cool, feel really cool. It's the loosening, the interior space that allows the movement to change. Now, as you get into your right leg, stay in your right leg. Turn your left hand, it's ready for brush knee. This hand sweeps around far away from the body. Look how far away I've gone, but I'm not up. It's out. So now I've swirled the string. That comes in close. Now this hand's going to go far away. So it goes out. Then as you shift and turn, swirl the string. And then now the left hand's ready for brushing and the right arm. Swirl the string. And then swirl the string. Now the bear swats the jumping fish. So that arm comes up. Shift and turn. And mark, your best bet is to not break the practice every time. So the whole thing is, is part of a flow. So if you can, always stay sort of uh, attentive. So when I say whatever's coming next, Stay in where you are because it will flow straight out of it rather than breaking it and then having to come back, right? So we've got this shift and turn, this brush and swat, and then left hand going down, right arm floating up. Now we're ready, we're weighted in one leg and it's this shift and turn and brush and swat. And then they change and then it's shift and turn, brush, and swat. 
Let's go for a higher jumping fish. So now the low hand keeps doing what it's doing, but the upper hand goes higher, up and over. And then they change and higher. So we're freeing the mechanisms of the body, of the machine, training ourselves to use hydraulics, liquid, fluid, power, softness, rather than rigidity. Now, pause where you are. Stay in the position. Now we're going right hand down into the water, left arm wing, roll, fold. Hold at the elbow. So now this arm is loaded, ready like a spring to push. So now we go shift and turn, brush knee and push. All right, so this extend. Now, right arm wing, left hand dip down, roll, fold. All right, so roll, fold. Now, Shift, turn, brush, push. All right, this push, extend. Now wing, roll, fold as the right hand's dipping down, and then we flow that way. Now let the arms continue, continue, continue out. Then they naturally find their way back to here. And then we're ready to go. And then through and fold and push. This is called brush knee and push. Make sure that you're changing weight leg to leg. So when we're going this way, the weight's going into that left leg, you're turning, and then you're letting the arms flow. So we're liberating the stuck quality. Tai Chi, if you focus on that idea that you are stuck, the mind, the nervous system, the tissue, the joints, and you say, okay, then every movement I'm possibly unsticking something. I'm ungluing something. And bring the arms down in front. Change your weight to your left leg. Turn your right foot out just a little bit, five degrees or so. Change your weight into your right leg. Left foot now empty. Put the toe out in front. Touch the floor very lightly. All right, so here... Notice that's different than here, All right? So don't let your weight go with the foot. The foot is empty out in front. Now bring this empty foot back with the heels touching, toes turned out, <clears throat> change the weight. So now all the weights in your left leg, right foot empty, touch empty. Bring the foot back. Change. The body weight goes down through the right leg. Toe touch. Bring the foot back. Change. Toe touch. Back. Change. Touch. Back. So that's the lower half of the golden rooster. Let's add the upper half. So as you put your right toes out, bend your right elbow, point your fingers up. Left hand, just a little awareness. So rather than just kind of dead limp there, bring just a little awareness into it, sort of like you're dipping your fingertips into the water. So the golden rooster stands on one leg. Now bring your right foot back, heels touching, and then change the weight. As you change the weight, change the hands. The high goes low, the low comes high, and the foot steps out. <clears throat> now step the left foot back, nothing changes. And then change the weight, the hands change, the other foot being empty, it can step out a little bit. So everything changes. And then bring the foot back. Change. 
So one of the key components here, Joe, make sure you're paying attention to this. When you step your foot out, don't put weight into it. So even if all you do is just step it very close, that's better than going too far and putting weight in your foot, right? So just whatever amount you can step forward, that allows you this quality of all the weight in one, none in the other. And so the saying in Tai Chi, one full, three empty. If you can really let one limb do all the support work, then these other three can be light and very capable, right? So this is just the beginning of that feeling of going, okay, all the weight down through this leg, so then this is the position. Now wash your paws again, bear washing paws in the stream. Now, change the weight to your right leg, stay there. Your left hand sweep the leg and vapor floating up and becomes a cloud. Back of hand facing forward, back of hand facing forward, this hand in the water. So now our weight is here, body is turned here, and we shift left, turn left, cloud, lake. And then the cloud rains down, the lake vapors up, and now we're ready to do the other side. Shift, turn, cloud, lake, vapor and rain. Shift, turn, cloud, lake, vapor up, rain down, cloud. Shifting and turn. Shifting and turn. Shifting and turn. Both hands down, wash, wash, settle, and wing, roll, fold, settle down, down, down to the middle, to your belly, right at the navel, turn your palms to face in, so this is called middle embrace, this is the standing position where everything's loose, Legs are loose, hips are loose, body is loose, but it's arranged around this middle, this filling of the reservoir. And then cross your hands and down. So let's try to find some Schwinn and flow through what we've just done. First movement, rising hand, the little change, sweeping down. Rise, sweep, rise. Now, hands scoop in front, open, they change, sweep down. Again, open. And roll, pull, down. Just like you learn an alphabet, you learn vocabulary words to learn a language. These are the vocabulary words of a language. Now we come up and out. In, up, out, down, and embrace the moon. Wing, roll, fold the right as the left sweeps under, 
Two magnets attract, repel, circle, then left over top, right underneath, attract, repel, around. One more of each. Both hands down, scoop, pull elbows back, and push. Wrap the hands around, draw, and push, and draw. Now left hand, push. Then turn left hand to face the body, right hand ready to push, and it's one push, one draw. Then turn, turn, push and draw. Turn. Push and draw. Push and draw, right? And it's creating this change through the whole body. It's not just, right? So allowing that soft quality to induce this freedom of movement through your body. Both hands back and down. The bare washing paws in the stream. Shift, turn, brush, and sweep. Shift, turn, brush, and sweep. Brush and sweep. The bear swirls the stream, so it's still brush knee, but it's the hand sweeps around in a big circle and, and comes in and then around. Yeah. Around. And each time, changing leg and turning from the middle pivot, and then changing leg and turning. The bear swats the jumping fish. Change and turn. Hands change positions and change and turn. Hands change position. Shift and turn. Now the high jumping fish. Uh. Uh. Now, brush knee and push. So that's wing, roll, fold, and brush knee and push. Then as left hand goes down, right arm wing roll fold. Shift, turn, brush, push. Wing roll fold. Shift, turn, brush, and push. Hands change, wing roll fold. Brush and push. Now, pause here, turn your right foot out a little bit, change the weight into the right foot, right hand goes down, bend left elbow, and touch the floor, golden rooster, this foot, right? Now you take your empty foot, step it back next to the other, change your weight into that leg, so now the other leg is empty. The hands change, one goes high, one goes low, and this foot is empty. Then you bring the empty foot back with no body weight in it, you step it back. Then as you change the weight, you synchronize all of that changing together. So that's a key piece to Tai Chi as it gets more complicated. 
why it feels more complicated is that we're not doing separate things. We're timing them together. We're orchestrating a transformation. Like the mechanisms are going right all together. So that's why the value of slowness in Tai Chi, it's not slow because, uh, you know, someone's too old or whatever to go slow. Going slow is what puts the workload right where we want it. So bringing that foot back and then going where we're feeling all the parts. We're tracking all of them and then getting them to arrive right on time. And then bring the foot back and and they arrive. Now, step parallel, wash your paw. Wash. And finally, sweep the lake Lake turns to vapor, rises, becomes a cloud. Now we've got shift, turn, cloud, lake. Then the cloud rains, the lake vapors up, they switch. And then we're going shift and turn, cloud, lake, vapor and rain. And they switch. And they switch. They change again. So make sure they change there, Mark. So right, yeah, there you go. Shift. So it's cloud, lake, and then they switch job. And then both hands down. And then this final Shen Fa or body method that sort of resets everything. Tip just the littlest bit into the heels, just a little bit back. Open and lift, right? So you're a little leaning back, you're open and lifting. <clears throat> then tip a little bit into your toes and sweep around and out in front. So that's the second gesture. Third gesture is once again go back into your heels a little bit and feel how that draws hands in and back. All right, so that gesture. And then settle to the middle of your feet, your hands settle to the belly level. And then remember how we squatted earlier when we were sitting and standing. So hips hinge back, fingers drip down, right? So from here to here, and then sit the buttocks and release the arms completely, right? And then just push through the earth and stand back tall. And we do it again. Rock a little bit to your heels safely. Heels, open, lift. Toes, rock to your toes, sweep around, reach. Heels, bringing hands in as if bringing something in this upper gate. And then settle to the middle of your feet, hands settle to the middle. And then we go hips. Sink down and then stand. And we'll do this one more time. Rock back, open and lift. Rock forward, sweep around. Rock back, bringing it in and settling middle and then hollowing and sinking. And so that gesture just washes everything through, resets all the basic flow, and then we wing, roll, fold, 
settle, settle, settle. Here's the navel. We turn the hands to face in, and then we close by one, two, and then this final hand position, little hand mudra. Thank you, everybody. Great job. Make sure you know where your chair is as you take a seat. If you have any questions, uh, feel free to unmute.